Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and it's official. Apple just sent out the invites for their October iPhone 12 event that will be taking place on October 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific time with the tagline high speed. So I think we can take a clue here that Apple is going to be showing off some really fast products with that A14 processor and we are expecting Apple to show off a whole range of products with four different iPhone 12s and some other products like the new Apple headphones a smaller HomePod, a new Apple TV, AirTags, and maybe, just maybe, some Apple Silicon Macs heading your way. But let's not delay any longer and let me tell you all about what to expect at this Apple October event. Now, first of all, without a doubt in the world, there is going to be an iPhone 12 at this event. At Apple September event, I told you beforehand not to expect it based on last minute reports coming from Mark Gurman and John Processor. And now this time, we are pretty much guaranteed to be seeing the next generation iPhone at Apple's October event. The iPhone 12 will of course be a redesign from the iPhone 10 through 11 generation and will now feature flatter sides that resemble the recent redesign of the iPad Pro and now iPad Air, as well as older designed iPhones that harken back to the iPhone 4 generation. This body redesign is something a lot of people are looking forward to because a lot of people consider the iPhone 4 to be one of the best designed phones of all time. This iPhone will come in four different sizes, a 5.4 inch iPhone, which recent reports say will be called the iPhone mini, a 6.1 inch regular size iPhone 12, the same size as the iPhone 11, and two pro models with a 6.1 inch size, that's the same size as the normal iPhone 12, and they are getting rid of the 5.8 inch size, and a brand new 6.7 inch iPhone 12 Pro Max, which will be the biggest iPhone screen size ever. I've mentioned countless times on these update videos, perhaps too many times, that the iPhone that I'm most excited for this year is the smaller iPhone 12 mini, which will reportedly be in an even smaller body size than the current iPhone SE. It's going to be Apple's smallest flagship iPhone in years, and I'm eager to try a smaller phone again with modern specs inside of it. Of course, all of these iPhone models will now have OLED displays. Current rumors suggest that none of the iPhones will receive the 120 Hertz ProMotion display, and Apple will be sticking with a 60 Hertz display this year as a way to preserve battery life. Furthermore, the notch size of the iPhone 12 will not be shrinking. It should be about the same size as the iPhone 11's notch, except for the iPhone 12 mini, which will have a slight size reduction, but it will basically appear the same size because of the smaller 5.4 inch display. Of course, the iPhone 12 will come packed with Apple's brand new A14 processor. In fact, I did a recent video where I covered a leaked Geekbench score on the A14, and this thing just has next level CPU performance that rivals even the strongest desktop Mac in single core performance with a supposed score of 1,583 and laptop level multi-core performance with a 4,198 multi-core score. RAM on the normal iPhone 12 models is rumored to come in at four gigabytes while the Pro models will carry six gigabytes of RAM. Secondly, in addition to the A14 processor, this will also be Apple's first 5G capable set of iPhones. And from recent reporting, all models of the iPhone 12 will at least get some version of 5G networking capability. I know 5G really isn't that big of a deal right now, but carriers and Qualcomm are both really excited to get a mainstream iPhone out there with a 5G networking chip as it should drive consumer adoption of the technology and in turn lead to wireless carriers investing even more of their resources into expanding their existing 5G networks. As for cameras, the iPhone 12 is slated to come with a two camera system with a wide angle and ultra wide angle lens and the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max are rumored to come with a triple camera setup, of course a wide, ultra wide and telephoto, as well as a LiDAR scanner, the same one found on the 2020 iPad Pro, except that Apple will actually be using the LiDAR scanner for more than just augmented reality, and they will be incorporating photo features for this LiDAR scanner, like enhanced portrait mode shots. The camera bump may get a little bit bigger on all of the iPhone models to account for the increased sensor size. Rumored pricing for these models is that the iPhone 12 mini will start at $699, then you'll go to $799 for the regular size 6.1 inch iPhone 12, the iPhone 12 Pro will start at $999, and of course the iPhone 12 Pro Max will start at $1,099. The pricing here is good and lines up with the current 
iPhone 11 and 11 Pro lineup. However, this year's iPhone will not come with a power adapter or lightning headphones in the box. However, we are expecting Apple to ship a new braided USB-C to lightning cable. Okay, that's pretty much all we know about the iPhone 12 at this point, and hopefully there's a few surprises at the October 13th event. As for when you can order these iPhone 12s, I would expect that you should be able to order them on that Friday. So that would be October 16th, and for the time, it will probably be 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time if we are going based on history with the iPhone 11 pre-order time. Okay, well, we covered the iPhone 12, but are we likely to see any other products make their debut at this event? Well, based on some recent evidence, it looks like we might, as Mark Gurman for Bloomberg is saying that Apple is no longer selling rival earphones and speakers in their Apple store or on their website. This suggests that Apple is getting ready to launch its own version of custom on-ear headphones, which a lot of people think will be called the AirPod Studio. These will be wireless over-the-ear headphones developed by Apple and feature a lot of the same technologies that are currently inside of the AirPods Pro. So technologies like the H1 chip for lower latency and faster pairing and automatic switching, spatial audio for bigger, more precise soundstage, noise cancellation and transparency mode, and some new custom additions like automatic detection to turn the headphones on or off depending if they are currently on your ears, automatic positioning so the audio channels for left and right can be switched depending on how you put your headphones on, and swappable magnetic ear pads and headphone bands so you can add your own style and flair to these headphones. Furthermore, Apple is also supposedly getting ready to launch a new smart speaker, which will be a smaller and cheaper HomePod that sacrifices audio quality to achieve a lower price point. Not much else is really known about this HomePod mini, except that it will be cheaper, but hopefully it doesn't sacrifice too much on sound quality and can hit a price point of around $100, as if it doesn't hit that price point, it might have a hard time getting sales against strong competitors like the Nest Home or Amazon Alexa. We are also expecting Apple to show off the AirTags, which is a Bluetooth tracking device that you will be able to place on items and then use the vast iPhone network out there to be able to accurately geolocate them and then ping your device. It may also feature some AR features thanks to Apple's U1 chip to help you locate lost items that are within your vicinity. AirTags are interesting and if anyone can help you find a lost item out there and they have a network out there of devices, it's Apple, so maybe this is a product for you, although I don't think I'll be using them too much. We may also see a brand new version of the Apple TV with an increased focus on gaming. The last we heard about the Apple TV was that it was getting an A12Z processor that would give it better graphical power. However, that rumor was quite a while ago and recent rumors are saying that Apple may actually be getting ready to just jump ahead and put an A14 processor inside of the Apple TV. Furthermore, Apple may be planning its own first party gaming controller to go alongside of that Apple TV, again, for a focus on Apple Arcade gaming. Now, what about other products? I know a lot of my viewers are excited for Apple's transition over to their own custom Apple Silicon processors inside of the Mac, and we are expecting Apple to at least announce one Apple Silicon Mac by the end of this year. Most rumors say that will be in the form of a new MacBook Pro or maybe a 24 inch iMac. Apple Silicon Mac should have even greater performance gains all while maintaining greater power efficiency, meaning that they will have longer battery life with some claims as high as 50 to 100% gains in battery life and should be much better as not getting as hot under intense loads like the current Intel CPUs do. However, I'm not sure if we will see Apple Silicon Max at this event, as I've heard a few rumors say that Apple is planning on doing three events this year, one event in September, one in October, and one in November. And while it's possible that Apple may have one more thing to show us, and it could be an Apple Silicon Mac at this event, I think they may want to carve out their own special event for Mac hardware to really spend time showing us the advantages of this chip transition. So I would say don't expect Apple Silicon Macs for this event, uh, but that's just a guess, and only Apple really knows for sure what they plan to show off. And if I was reading this event invite a little literally, the high speed invitation, that could be an indication that Apple may show off Apple Silicon after all, but 
who knows? Okay, everyone, and that's what I think we can expect at Apple's October 13th event, which is going to take place at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Please let me know what you think of this event and what do you expect to see in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, well, be sure to give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, well, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.